Welcome to Job Doubt, the wrestling editorial that reminds you that there's no bull in that British bulldog. <laughs> it may have finally happened, boys and girls. We're still waiting for the WWE to announce it themselves, but the Wrestling Observer has reported that the Hall of Fame class of 2020 is set to include former intercontinental, European, hardcore, and tag champ, Davey Boy Smith. Whether he wants to or not. Jesus! If this is true, we are looking at arguably the most stacked Hall of Fame lineup in years, if not ever. Hogan, Hall, Nash, Waltman, Batista, Liger, the Bellas, and yes, I know the Bellas are awful, but they're still big in the media world, and you gotta come to terms with that. But now, adding the British Bulldog? Davey was one of those guys you could look at as a main eventer who didn't get to main event, that Wembley Stadium notwithstanding. He was world champ caliber without having won the world title. He did everything. He was a powerful tag team specialist in the 80s and 90s. He would form memorable teams with the Dynamite Kid, with Owen Hart, with Lex Luger. Yeah, don't you dare tell me you forgot about the Allied Powers. He had one of the greatest intercontinental title matches in history. Granted, he was drugged off his face and had no recollection of it. He was also the first European champion in WWE history. He was basically their UK ambassador. You know, in a similar vein to how the WWE promotes Mysterio to the Latino audiences. Tragically, Davey Boy's life and career both were hampered so much by drugs. He came from the 80s, where cocaine was about as common as acai berry is now. He was fired for steroid and drug use in 92. He developed a huge painkiller dependency after a botched spot in WCW, where he fell onto a trap door in the ring meant for the Renegade in the Ultimate Warrior's big debut, because nobody would bother to tell him it was there. Hell, Davey was almost paralyzed by that incident, and because of the painkillers he would use and abuse from then on, indirectly, it may have cost him his life. Davey Boy Smith would pass away of a heart attack in 2002 while preparing and training for another comeback. Now, there aren't many people who look back at the British Bulldog with negative memories. I mean, Dynamite Kid, maybe. There was immense heat between the two when Davey trademarked the British Bulldog under Dynamite's nose while they were both using the name British Bulldogs as a team. At that point, Davey was just Davey Boy Smith, so, I mean, it could be argued that Dynamite had equal claim to the name and residuals. There's also the Sunny incident, but I'm gonna get into that in another video, and uh, oh! And the thing between the WWE and his son Harry over his boots in the Hall of Fame. Overall though, Davey was the WWE's biggest British star. D sorry Regal. He was a charismatic powerhouse that spanned the Hogan era, the New Gen era, the Attitude era. If he hadn't succumbed to painkillers, who knows? Maybe he would have been a presence in the Ruthless Aggression era. He was training for it. Maybe he'd be coaching in the Performance Center. Maybe he'd be on NXT UK Today in a similar role to Regal. There's only one reason that I'm not in favor of the British Bulldog joining the Hall of Fame, and that is because Brett and Anvil got in on their own. Bulldog's getting in on his own. With the hangups we all know that are stopping Owen from going in on his own, this really greatly reduces any chances of Brian Pillman ever going in. I mean, it all could have been different if last year's Heart Foundation induction included the 97 crew, but that wasn't meant to be. I don't want to take the Bulldogs moment and make it about somebody else, though, so I'm going to point this one to you. Please tell me your favorite British Bulldog Davy Boy Smith memories. One of mine didn't even happen in the WWE or WCW, rather in a reboot of Stampede Wrestling. Bulldog conducted a short in-ring interview to introduce his son Harry, the future D.H. Smith, or Davy Boy Smith Jr. if you watch Japan. Later on, Harry would wrestle Stampede's top heel principal Richard Pound, and the Bulldog would get involved before declaring that he was going to be wrestling for Stampede too. Now at the time, that was the coolest thing for 13-year-old me. Seeing people from one company wrestling in another. I mean, obviously this was before Taz and Awesome for the ECW title and before the invasion. I'm rambling though, so yeah, let me know your favorite Bulldog memories in the comments. For now though, I better get my shoulders off the mat, so thank you for tuning in to Jobbed Out. I'll catch you next time.